This is AutoLine Daily, the show dedicated to enthusiasts of the global automotive industry. You know we love to show you new technology from the supplier industry, and today it's 3D navigation from Continental, which partnered with HERE and Leia to develop the display. The system combines HERE's maps that include 3D depictions of buildings and topography, Continental's 3D display, and Leia's light field technology, which makes the 3D effect visible from numerous angles. This allows the driver and passengers to see the 3D maps without the need for special goggles or an eye tracking sensor. The companies didn't reveal when we could see this in a vehicle or if any automakers are interested in the display. We have some updates on future products from Auto Forecast Solutions that will be available late this decade. Production of the current BMW 3 Series at the company's plant in San Luis Potosi ends in July of 2027. Production of the next-gen version kicks off at the same plant in August of 2027. Mustang fans are going to have to wait a while for the next-gen model. It doesn't go into production until December of 2028 at Ford's Flat Rock, Michigan plant. And Lincoln begins production of the all-electric version of the Corsair at its Oakville, Ontario plant in September of 2026. We don't know if that will be the company's first EV, but it's pretty late in the game. And by that time, Cadillac will have a full lineup of EVs. Bentley hired a new design director. Andreas Mint is taking over for Stefan Silaf, who had been with the company for six years, but is leaving to pursue other opportunities. Mint has spent his entire career at the VW Group and previously was the head of exterior design for Audi. We want to know what drives your testing. OTA, connected car, diagnostics, remote testing, Intrepid Control Systems is here to help you work from anywhere. Intrepid Control Systems, driven by your data. Mahindra's roller coaster ride in the U.S. continues. Reuters reports that the company cut more than half of its workforce in North America. As of early 2020, it employed more than 500 people. But that should come as little surprise after the International Trade Commission ruled that Mahindra's off road only Roxor looks too much like a Jeep, which forced Mahindra to stop building and selling the Roxor in the U.S. But Mahindra expects to hire a good portion of those workers back after the ITC ruled right before Christmas that the automaker's redesigned Roxor no longer infringes on Jeep. Outdoor recreational vehicles have seen a surge during the pandemic, and no doubt Mahindra wants to get in on that action. Mercedes is launching a new feature on its Mercedes Me app called EcoCoach, which is meant to train plug-in hybrid and pure EV buyers on how to get the most out of their vehicle. Now, before you get bored and click away, there are a few interesting aspects to this. First, users can score points by doing things like charging in different locations or on successive days, and then use those points to earn bonuses. That includes vouchers for charging or for the Mercedes-Benz collection shop and even CO2 compensation, where investments are made in CO2 offset programs. And because customer behavior can have a big impact on battery life, Mercedes says one of the main goals of the app is to help prolong the service life of its battery-powered vehicles. Hyundai released a teaser video for its next performance vehicle, the Kona N, where we get to see a few of its unique features. The lower air inlet on the front fascia seems to be quite a bit larger and extends more into the upper grille area. 
The grill pattern is also a different honeycomb pattern. There's end-specific side skirts, a larger roof-mounted spoiler, integrated diffuser in the rear bumper, and dual exhaust tips. Under the hood is a turbocharged 2-liter engine mated to an 8-speed DCT, which is the same setup as the Veloster N. In that car, the engine produces 275 horsepower and 260 pound-feet of torque. The Kona N is expected to go on sale as a 2022 model. And be sure to join us tomorrow when Sandy Monroe will be on Autoline After Hours. Always interesting, often sarcastic, and definitely informative, Sandy is one of our favorite guests. So join John and Gary when we go live at 3 p.m. Eastern Time on our website and YouTube channel. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone Tires, solutions for your journey, and by Intrepid Control Systems, over-the-air engineering, boost your game. CES is being held virtually this year. Even so, there's a lot of good automotive technology coming out of the show. General Motors unveiled a bunch of new technologies and products, and what's getting a ton of attention is the VTOL, or vertical takeoff and landing vehicle, that would be part of the Cadillac lineup. It's a quad rotor electric drone with an automotive 90 kilowatt motor. The idea is for personal transportation when time is of the essence and you don't want to get stuck in traffic. And once you land, Cadillac has this autonomous vehicle that you can get into. To us, it sure looks like this is a luxury version of the cruise origin. It features huge door openings, a massive glass roof, and wraparound sofas instead of individual seats. The layout is meant for passengers, especially families and friends, to focus on each other. GM also showed us a bit more of the Celestic, but only in the background. And yes, they pronounce it Celestic, not Celestique. This is the limited production luxury sedan that will be hand built in Detroit. It's all electric, built off the Altium platform, comes with all wheel drive, four wheel steering, and an all glass roof. That glass uses suspended particles and is divided into four sections so each occupant can set the level of transparency they want. It also gets a dashboard screen that stretches from pillar to pillar. GM hasn't said anything about pricing, but we would expect it to cost at least $150,000 and maybe a whole lot more. GM's presentation involved a lot more than Cadillac. It also is launching a new business unit for delivery and logistics companies called Bright Drop. The services cover everything from the first to last mile of delivery. Its first product is the EP1, an electrically assisted pallet that carries up to 200 pounds and is meant to move things short distances, like from a delivery van to a customer's front door. It can even follow a courier walking on a route at up to three miles an hour. Bright Drop's second product is an electric light commercial van called the EV600. It features large door openings and walkways for easier access to the cargo area, which is over 600 cubic feet, and it can be packed full of EP1s. The van uses GM's Altium platform and batteries with an estimated range of 250 miles. FedEx will be its first customer and will get the first vans late this year. But think about all of this. In just a couple of years, GM will have over 30 electric vehicles in its showrooms. It's one of the world's leaders in autonomous technology. It is ramping up fast in mobility services and will be a major competitor in electric commercial vans. And it has the capital, the manufacturing facilities, and the dealer network to pull it all off. If a startup made an announcement like this, the world would beat a path to its doorway. GM stock went up around 4% yesterday, but any startup would have seen a massive jump in its stock. There's a lot of good information coming out of CES, and you can check out our series of interviews with Magna. Just look in the AutoLine on the Road section of our website or on our YouTube channel. That's all we've got for today. Thanks for watching.